Thank you for joining us for Card Player TV's coverage of the Borgata Poker Open. Now, the first break just ended here at the Borgata, and we caught up with Mike Mizraki to find out why he's already on the short stack. Well, that's what happens when you start with 25, 50, you have 50, 40,000 in chips, so you get a little carried away. Now, I was playing pretty well. Hey, you know, Mikey! I had uh, aces cracked. I mean, a few big hands that were cracked already, and uh, missed a few river cards, missed a few draws, and uh, maybe lack of sleep, jet lagged, you know. I just came back from Barcelona. And, uh, Tell them pretty how you good did trip. Over there. Uh, How'd yeah. you do in Barcelona? <laughs> well, I did well in Cannes. I, uh, Tell them how they called them all in with 7 8 high when they had two kings. 8 7 3. No, that's not. Oh, yeah, seven, and Cannes in France, I had uh, 14. My brother finished 15, Robert finished right. 15. And I get kings 14 ago, and I uh, get all in pre flop. I, I learned a few new words in French tapis, this, couché, fold. Tapis means all in. I told the guy to tapis, and he put it all in with 7 8 at kings, and he made two pair on the river. So I finished 14. And I went to Barcelona and I had a huge stack and uh, had uh, two eights. Well, Spanish I know a little bit. And they got a little famous JC Tran behind us. So maybe uh, his hand would have held up. And I had like two eights there. And the flop was eight, seven, three with two clubs. And uh, top set. And we both had a really big stack. I got only had a flush draw and he made his flush. And that was pretty much it. And now I'm here <laughs> trying to blow it away so I can get back to Miami. So when you're playing in Europe and then you come back to the States, are there any adjustments you need to make to your game? Does the well, player differ that much? Well, in France, it was like stuff I've never seen before. I heard I mean, it was the play crazy was, in France. It was a great, a great, great tournament. Yeah, had a lot of fun there. Uh, a lot of new players. Uh, no one speaks English. They don't even know what they're talking about. So is it and only sometimes French it was, at the table? Some, it's, it was French, but what, kind of, what am I going to say? We'll be silent. I'm not going to be a mute. So I just, I was talking anyways. And uh, I don't matter. No one's going to understand me unless somebody that speaks English on the table. So I, you don't even know what anybody's talking about. And uh, I was learning new words, and I was starting to speak in French. I was making my bets, like I'd be like, Mille Vincien or something like that, 1,025. I learned a few new words there. And, uh, but in, in Barcelona, it was cool because there, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of play, players that are playing online and it's just different style of play and a little crazier. Everyone seemed like they were under 21. I don't know. I feel like the oldest man in the tournament. Gavin Smith is having fun at the tables, as usual. Day one in the quest to win the Borgata Poker Open. He's drawn an extremely tough table of Ted Lawson, Lee Watkinson, a bookie from New York, six other guys that look familiar who I don't know their names. It's going to be tough. But I've already made one flush. I think if I can make six flushes today, I'm going to be a force. I'm at one and counting. J.C. Tran made a fashionably late entrance here at the Borgata. I've lost every hand I've played so far. That's not good. That's well, not conducive to winning tournaments. Well, let me let me tell you the rest of the story. I just got here like literally five minutes ago. Okay. Well, I was dealt one hand, played it, lost 50 bucks. What can I say? Not too bad. You start with 40,000 in chips. Yeah. So I'm, I'm stuck 50. Actually, I'm stuck about 400 because I blind out that much, you know, because I, I, I showed right. up late. So why were you late? You sleeping? Getting your rest? Um, I'm jet lagged. Came came back from Asia. Definitely. Oh, so, yeah. that's even worse. So like, I've been waking up like three in the morning every day, and uh, I woke up like, three or four times a day, and uh, I've been up since 7 a.m. So I tried. To, I, I went to grab a bite, try to go back and sleep, but I couldn't. So I said, "What the heck? I'll come down and play." So you just came out from Macau, correct? Yes. We want to congratulate you on signing with the APT. You're an ambassador. Well, thank you. Sponsored player. It's a long yes. time coming. Yes, this is uh, what I've been waiting for. You know, I mean, I mean, I, I think I, I deserve it. You know? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I might offer, you know, a couple of gigs here and there, but nothing to my interest. So right. finally, APT stepped in and they offered um, myself, Nam, and you know, a couple of my buddies, you know some good money to, to go up there and, you know, represent the APT, and so far we represent it. You know, Nam went over there and won. Quinn comes in third, the same tournament? Yeah, Quinn comes in third, Nam won it. Well, that, we, Nam actually won the APPT, which is hosted by the Poker Stars, and like... That was the $20,000 buy Yeah, yeah, right? the high rollers, so they were, they were actually pretty upset that an APT guy came in and won, which is kind of a good thing. It's kind of, it's kind of like, you know, like a... Uh, 
like a, a WPT guy representing WPT goes in and win like a World Series kind of. But not, not full tilt pro. But, yeah, wins but this, this is more competitive because they're actually two two tournaments trying to get going in Asia and uh, you know they're, they're competing. But uh, you know it, it's it's a lot of fun. We'll be back with more interviews from this World Poker Tour event. I'm Lizzie Harrison for Card Player TV.